Next keynote speaker uh, is uh, naked. Well, he's called naked. He's not naked. That would be easy. <laughs> Here's my pitch. No. Uh, na he's from naked. He's not naked. Whoa. We're all naked, but he's dressed. I'm going to do this again. Naked. And his name is Jarno Vanatapio. <laughs> Well, perfect. <coughs> yeah, I'm obviously not naked, but I'm going to tell you the the beginning and the idea by, behind naked. And um, obviously, having a prize, uh, the guys that obviously won the pitch here, having legend as Magnus uh, as a mentor, obviously, is really good. Magnus is one of my investors, so I need to talk nicely about the equity. So they are. I love e equity. Perfect, guys. <laughs> Perfect, I need more money. I will tell you pretty fast about uh, the journey we had with Naked so far. It's a pretty young company. It's our, we started company April 2015. We went live with Naked uh, January 2016 as a website. And from January 2016 today, we have actually uh, gone from zero to 70 million uh, kroners in, in gross merchant value a month. So I will tell you uh, the drivers behind that, and hopefully we can have a good discussion after this. This should have sound, but obviously it works as well. So really, really, really fast. What are we? We are a digital vertical brand called the EVB aim to direct uh, to global fashion consumers with a unique inventory and marketing play. This is a term I will talk to you a little bit about uh, DVB. And we are also an influencer br uh, brand uh, incubator, uh, a kind of an enabler for uh, influencers to monetize on their reach. And why we started, obviously, uh, it's because we saw that their space for DTCs is very, very uh, appealing. And it's, we, I also saw that the market for fast fashion and DTC globally, uh, there's a big space in that. Obviously, uh, I've been into e-com for 14 years. I started Nelly.com. It's a brand store selling other brands, I think. You know, and I, I knew that I can't go, in, go into the fashion scene online again and compete with uh, Salando and the likes of them. Salando is doing it way too good on the brand portfolio and Boost as well. Um, so I, I wanted to go in to the direct-to-consumer business with a vertical brand that I actually designed. Uh, not me, obviously, but people at Naked. So uh, direct-to-consumer brands are very different from their e-commerce pre predecessors. They are financed, designed, produced, marketed, distributed, and sold by the same company. So Naked is a full-stack house. We have everything in-house to be able to do this. And... Uh, so what we have done up to in two years, um, numbers, we have a run rate of $60 million, roughly a half a billion kroners. Uh, we have an average order of $105. 85% uh, of our sales are private label, which is what I uh, went for. And to compare this number, it took me almost nine years to get to 30% private label on Nelly. And I think Nelly is at 40% or something like that. ASOS is still at 50 or something like that. Our margin, I will talk about later, is 54%. And uh, how we reach those numbers mainly through our, our something we call social movement. I wanted to create a brand this time around that is carried and much uh, um, is carried by the customers in in one sense uh, being spread across the world in, in a different way than I marketed Nelly. Nelly was more about going from TV commercial, shooting at the Nordic audience. Now we actually grow from the inside and out. So that means that right now we have more than 5 million hits uh, on the website a month. Uh, we shipped last month to 129 countries. This year we have shipped to 173 countries. And this is happening from our fulfillment center in Holland. 
So Naked right now as a company, to our knowledge, uh, if you look at the Times, uh, Financial Times list of fast growers, we believe that Naked is top 20 fastest growing companies across Europe. So this is our monthly chart. So it's, it's much about velocity, obviously. So the biggest risk for e all e-commerce, though, started with this, because I knew that I wanted to go into fashion online. I had a two-year non-compete after selling Nelly. Uh, I wanted to go into this scene, but I knew that the biggest change has, had happened with the customers, not the actual e-com industry in itself. So I, we put a lot of emphasis, and I think you know, when we talked to Magnus and eEquity, uh, we pitched a lot about yeah, we understand this new generation of customers because they are pretty fucked up, to be honest, to, be ha to have as both employees, obviously, but having them as, as customers. And I knew that I had to uh, know them inside and out. So, but the biggest change that we saw is this, that the values have changed. We are in, uh, probably some of you have seen this, uh, map before. This is uh, survival values, surf expression values versus secular values. This means basically this chart shows what is status out in the world. And uh, status for people in Sweden, 2017, the biggest luxury a Swedish person can have today is time. And uh, we knew that. And uh, we are the most extreme country in this chart, as you see. We are up in the uh, right corner. When I started Nelly in 2003, it was much about you were actually shopping for the sake of shopping. You like to go to shop, shop products, clothing, and uh, accessories, etc., cars. But I all, already for six, seven years ago, I started talking about there's changing in, changing the retail behavior, our shopping behaviors. We started to post pictures of our food, our lunch on Instagram, and then we started posting pictures of uh, when we travel or do the tough viking. Every person in my age, around 40, needs to do that somehow to validate themselves. And, and uh, you need to have the bicycles and the bicycle shorts and all of that. Typical Swedish mid-age. Um, but still, if you go to India, the biggest status there is still owning stuff, possessing stuff and buying stuff. This girl has uh, Swarovski crystal lenses. That's status in India. But you wouldn't post a picture of your car on Instagram. Your new, if you buy a new car in, in Sweden, you actually don't post it on Instagram. You don't flaunt your purchases. And it's actually considered almost uh, bad to go and shop today. You need to convince yourself that, okay, I need a new jacket. I need a new dress. I don't need dresses, obviously, but... But, and, and I knew that this has happened. I couldn't play the same ga game I did with Nelly, so. But the cool thing as well is that being in Sweden is a very good country to start something in because the rest of the world is actually coming to our end. When India, the middle class in India is getting better, uh, they're getting their finances better and better, they actually start to appreciate more stuff than because they have bought their car, they have bought their house. So, but this generation, the new generation, are very, very conscious. So it's a very hard generation to actually sell items to. These, their DNA is, I mean, if you look at Generation Y, which is between uh, 1985 and 1994, those guys were influenced by TV and, uh, and movie celebrities from Hollywood. Compare that to the 95. Uh, they are influenced by online celebrities and friends. So I had to create, Naked had to have user and, influ and influencer generated content. Uh, the attention span for these guys they, from 85 to 94 was 12 seconds. The new generation, they have eight seconds. That's why everybody thinks they have HDAD. And uh, it's not that because the selection of stuff you can do is getting bigger and your attention span is getting shorter. So that means that I had to build naked, very direct, very clean. That's why it's called naked. It's raw, it's very, very direct to the core. The first guys communicate with text, these guys communicate uh, with images and videos. I had to make a lot of uh, pics and videos on, on site. 
They absorb gloss in mainstream marketing, the old ones. This new generation, they use ad blockers and looks for authenticity. And, and that is very, very hard to replicate. So we have content marketing and private label. And the former generation, they act on deals. This act on vibe is, and product is more important than price. So we wanted to create this. We are not price leaders. We don't sell on price. We sell on vibe. So in the early days of e-com, you had Amazon, which was search shop shopping. You had uh, browse shopping, which is Zalando. We tried to be the new social and discovery shopping, which is kind of a, uh, a breed, uh, a new breed of e-com. Vertical direct to consumer brand. The new generation is almost post-materialistic. They want, don't want to own stuff. They're self-expressing, involved, engaged, righteous, experience oriented, sustainably oriented. We had to make sure that we build something that is in, in, in line with what they expected. So we created five commandments on Naked for our, our staff to follow these five commandments. In anything we do, we need to five, follow these five commandments. So everything we do is to try to make it simple. We are, but we are somewhat of fuck-ups at, at the office, so we try to, we do it too, uh, too hard for the customers sometimes, because they only have an attention span of eight seconds. So if you go back and think about your own behavior, you don't use anything that is complex because you don't have the attention span. You only use apps that is very easy. You only go to websites that's very easy. So that's what we work with, make it very, very simple. Updated, I think, you know, uh, think newness and stay ahead of the curve. Uh, it's the same with you get bored very, very fast. So we have uh, our team designs between 35 and 40 new styles a day uh, just to keep up to be able to have uh, the fast fashion turnaround. Engaging, we inspire people to engage with us. I will tell you more about that. Trust, I mean, trust is always there. But if you actually do something to uh, lose the trust of this new generation, it's very hard to get back. So that is very important. Authentic, always remember the naked soul. This is what we talk a lot about at the office. So just a brief look at the <coughs> website. <coughs> Sorry. Frictionless payments. We have more than 300 payment options because we are selling to so many countries, but we only show uh, a certain amount in each country. This is a new thing that many shop uh, e-com sites doesn't have. We have, I love the fact when you go to hotels.com, you always get this kind of a sense of urgency. I need to book it because otherwise it's gone. It's not gone, it's just playing with your mind. And uh, so we did this, that we had this social, social validation. So we can actually see if you're at a product, you can actually see how many other people are looking at this product. This, cre this creates a, a shopping, a social shopping layer on top of the experience. And you, if you feel that, okay, and you can also see how many purchase it last 24 hours. So, so if you say, okay, 500 people bought this dress last 24 hours, then you think, okay, people will probably like me in this dress. Uh, internal likes, we have more than one million internal likes on products. It's the same, same thing, social validation. You can actually see that other people like these products. And, uh, and then we have to buy the whole outfit thing as well, which, where we actually uh, are bundling discount on top of each other. And, and this is working very well for us. Um, the next uh, version of Naked, you can actually look at the same product. If you look at the product in a studio mode, it looks like this. But then you want to look at the same product worn on other people, looks like that, and then you, or you worn on influencers, it looks like that. And this is very, very good for obviously the conversion rate. And we are getting more than 200 pictures a, uh, pictures a day sent to us. So this is a major part of our, our uh, strategy. We are recirculating uh, curated content from our customers and influencers. Because remember the new generation, they actually like to look at other customers better than they like to look at Hollywood celebrities. So I won't read all of this, but traditional brands take a tumble everywhere in the value chain, promotion, distribution, and shipping. By pa passing on costly brick and mortar stores, focusing on online channels, and owning the customer margins, DTC differs radically from traditional retail and e-commerce. What happens is that basically is that we don't have any middle middlemen. We have own the total customer experience from uh, designing the pieces to selling it to the end consumer. So we actually 
very, very data-driven, actually look at this behavior and, and look what kind of clothing should we design. And then we design that. And then we use, obviously, artificial intelligence on site to make it very, very personal and, and, and uh, very segmented. <coughs> And this means that we can be more accurate in our purchases. So we actually have 85% of all items sold on Naked is priced with full price. So we're not price drivers and we don't want to be that. Because that gives us a margin that is uh, unbelievably good for being our second year. So right now we are um, operating on a margin last two quarters on 55%. Year to date we have uh, 54%. So we are actually already after two years, we have a higher gross margin than H&M. I know those guys are suffering. I wouldn't, you know, I don't want to add mouth them. But obviously we, we have a very, very good margin. And uh, this is what you get when you have a direct-to-consumer brand. If you would take away the brands that we sell for other external brands, if you just look at Naked, year to date we have a gross margin that is, that is higher than 60%. The, you probably don't like it, but the investors like that. Marketing. Uh, Generation Z is twice as influenced by social media as by deals. Go in and look at this study in published in retaildrive.com. It's 19th of September. So generation is twice as uh, generation set is twice as influenced by social media as by deals. So that's why we play uh, our game pretty hard on Instagram. You've probably seen us there if you are in the target group. So we got we reached 1.3 million followers in 20 months. This is the breakdown. We haven't shown this to anybody else, so I don't know if I should show it, but here it is. Uh, only 5.3 percent of our followers are from uh, from Nordics. Are we, you know. We love you guys, but we really don't care about you too much. For us, it's more about uh, making a global hit of Naked than uh, doing something that is big in the Nordics. So uh, there's a lot of growth potential. We are obviously predominantly uh, in big in Europe, and we hopefully can we can reach other markets uh, and do it very well. But we ship to 124 countries every month. Facebook, we have some followers as well. Uh, but the biggest thing for us is that we only don't, you know, it's not all, only about the followers, obviously about the engagement rate. So we don't buy followers. And that you can see in this chart, we have actually the best engagement rate of all our uh, peers that we know of. So every three days we get 10,000 new followers just on, on Instagram. Socially driven marketing with authentic voice. So basically, how do we get this uh, user-generated content and, and, and influencer-curated content? So we actually look in our database of, of suitable influencers and customers. We sample a lot of, lot of products to customers and consumers. And then we send the products to them. We look that they post it and they tag us. And, and this obviously gives a... a ripple effect in the community. And uh, some of that becomes followers from us, for us. Some of that creates content for us that we actually recirculate on site. And some of that uh, uh, turns out to be sales for us, direct sales. So this is a play that we play. And we do the collabs thing as well as anybody else. But we, are, we have a, a way to figuring out which co uh, influencers to work with. We have 140,000 influencers in our database after two years. I need to speed up here. Uh, it's all about engagement and content as well. Our goal is to become HBO faster than HBO can become us. This was said by the CEO of Netflix. So content is king, no doubt about it. I'm putting more than one million kroners a month just on creating content. So, uh, but obviously if you follow us on Instagram, you don't understand why we have pictures of food but because we are a fashion company. It's just because we are, this is the reality how you can actually gain 1.3 million followers in 20 months. You need to understand how the algorithms works on Instagram. So actually why we post pictures like this on food and, and on beaches and stuff like that, that is engaging. So what we do with Naked is we don't go full frontal and say to all of you guys that, okay, you need to buy our stuff. We actually trick your mind, you know, long enough 
So we actually think that we're cool enough to buy from. So actually, we just post stuff like this all the time, but we don't talk about shopping. You can't go and treat your Instagram uh, feed like a, a um, channel for your advertising. It's nothing like that. that. You will never ever gain millions of followers by that. You need to just treat it as a place where you repeat your, uh, repeat your brand day in and day out, day in and day out. So text matters as well. If you look at the captions, for, because what we do is that we post a good picture. For every picture we post, we actually say no to nine other pictures. So there are five people looking at every picture and say, okay, that's a good one, good enough picture. But it's not only, only about uh, pictures, it's about text and captions as well. We post stuff like this, like a boyfriend would be nice, good, but I'm already in a relationship with cocktails and bad decisions. Um, it's 2017, why do I still need to charge my phone? Why we do this is just to trigger the algorithms. Either you like the caption or you like the picture. It doesn't matter for us as long as you do something. So we only fish for, and we create this special vibe. We talk to you as a, you're a person. If we go down, then we go down together. BFF goals by blah, blah, blah. Tag your BFF. And then we get a few thousand tags of their best friends. And we don't talk about shopping. We talk about everything else than than shopping, but sometimes it um, ends up in shopping. Glossy content can be appreciated, but real content is engaging. So look at this slide. Um, the picture in the middle, up in the middle, that's created by us. And the picture down to the right is created by us. And the picture down to the left is created by us. And those are the pictures that get the fewest likes, unfortunately. So what we have done with our content team, we told them to buy cheaper cameras. They need to get more dirty pictures, basically more grainy. So they actually go into uh, the Central Park of, of Gothenburg to take those amateur pictures with iPhones just to get that very, very user-generated uh, content. So gloss is not in, uh, other stuff is in. Finally, our internal slogan on Naked, I think, you know, obviously this is our marketing play and this is our inventory play and so on, but it com comes down to, I have a stellar team, 130 people, and uh, they're working day and night. So this is the biggest change why we have uh, grown so fast. Vision is king, but execution is King Kong. So please walk the talk when you enter this office. So that's our internal slogan. Thank you. Thanks so much. So from King Kong to, uh, yeah, I have no link. Questions, please. Yeah, super interesting. Thanks a lot. Thank I you. was actually just Googling for uh, some of the products that I, would, that I would probably buy on your site, and I didn't find you guys on Google at all. Are you sort of becoming independent of that because you rely so heavily on social channels like Instagram and so? We have some uh, uh, pri you know, external brands. Did you Google for that? Or no. did you, our own brands. Okay. No, I guess that's difficult to find. Or? And then I need to go back and fire someone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Google is not our main play right now. And I think, you know, we are... Uh, um, if you look at our customer acquisition cost, we actually are uh, at a very, very low level, uh, you know, being the second year. I think it took like Salando seven years to get to this customer acquisition cost. And, and yeah, we, we are not that visible on, on, you know, the main channels, mm -hmm. uh, but we should be. So I'm not sure what you did there, but it should show up. He's just but I trust block. you. I trust you more than... <laughs> Trying to be a consumer. Yeah, no. exactly. Um, but no, of course, we're saying that makes sense. But, but we, um, yeah, we do performance marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not only about playing the uh, social uh, social media play. We do, you know, all sorts of, uh, you know, we do the whole full agenda of performance marketing as well. So it should show. Everything. Cool. Cool. Great presentation, uh, Jarno. There are actually no questions from the audience, and this is the first time today. And I think the reason is everyone is just focusing on your presentation. So there are no photos. There's, you know, everyone is just uh, very much focusing on what you're saying, which is very interesting. And, and you know, I think for the people who are in the audience, they're trying to kind of learn the naked secret sauce. Is there one? Uh, yeah, that's the vibe, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, that gave me the confidence to go and do this the second time around, because it, 
and I knew that even I can I can talk, I can actually say that H and M they don't get it and and the they don't get the new customers and we we knew that and that's the secret sauce of I probably spent way too much time with the, those bloggers throughout the years I started working with bloggers 2004 and and I kind of understand how the world turned and, and that gave us the confidence and I think by the end of the day. We heard as much as anybody else if we design bad clothing. I mean, the designs need to be really, really good. The prices need to be good. So at the end of the day, all of the other stuff really don't matter as much as yes, doing good, good products. So that's the secret sauce to... When it comes to the influencer marketing, so you said that you're using reverse psychology, basically. Instead of doing it like everyone else is doing, it's just doing push marketing. What you're doing is basically uh, trying to make them interested, and you're using kind of a pull, pull marketing. What do you call it internally? What, what kind of terminology do you use in, in inside the company? Yeah, of course, pull marketing. But we, we talk about much about inside and out, um, uh, out. And for us, you know, we think it's outdated to go uh, and, and, and push marketing from the outside and in. And, and for us, you know, that's why we grew. And for me, I don't actually look at the numbers too much where our market is because what we did with Nelly was that we went one market at a time, right? And I, I always surprised when I looked at the numbers. I thought that we have sent to 163 countries, to, but I got the numbers today, which was 173 countries. So it's, it's more for us that we actually grow like, is it weed? <laughs> Ugras, integras. Yeah. Uh, uh, across the globe because we kind of grow from from users and that is it's a cool thing we're really good we're pretty big in Lebanon which is a nightmare though and it's the postage mm -hmm. is killing us I like when you said we the Tobias was happy suddenly well, what yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we are big both of us <laughs> But it's just a final question from my side. It's very interesting. 85% of the revenue is coming from own brands. Is that by acquiring brands or is that by own manufacturing? How, how is... You know, it, I think, you know, in the beginning of Naked, there were, uh, we had some different uh, elements to the business, as you know, probably, and you read about. We discontinued that service, so it's more vertical, direct-to-consumer brand, and it's created by Austin Dallas. So I have like 40 people working full-time on just designing clothing, and it, it's a very much a, a kind of a... You know, if we want to be a digital native Sarah or H&M, that would be very suitable. Fantastic. You seem incredibly fast when you sort of get new collections out. I think it was, what, three, four weeks, which is, I think, is something that's more known from Zara from before. And then you mentioned engagement as well. Is that reflected in your purchase frequency? <laughs> yeah, I mean, for us, of course, we are, uh, we are very fast. We're very, very fast. I mean, we can turn a... a, a new uh, product in, in uh, five, six weeks. But of course, we do have a, a little bit way to go to Inditex speed. Mm -hmm. But it's all about stock turnover speed and, and uh, you know, getting to the market very, very fast and getting with the trends. But there's, um, uh, that's, that's definitely a major, major, having an agile fashion uh, supply chain is, is key for this. Otherwise, the investors get sour and about cash efficiency. Uh, and the largest fashion company in Sweden, coming from Sweden, is H&M. Yeah. They have revenues of 190 billion, I think. Uh, and you are soon a billion. Uh, what do you th how, thi how big do you think H&M will be in five years? And how big will you be? <laughs> I don't know, did they flatline last year or did they even decline? I don't know. I think they're declining. Yeah, so uh, if they decline and uh, give me uh, 20 years, we'll probably <laughs> meet somewhere in the middle. <laughs> now, it's, it's, uh, for us, it, it's a huge market for us. I mean, uh, that's why uh, what I did two years uh, with Naked took me seven, eight years with Nelly because the market is, the playground is much bigger. So go global if you want to, you know. And I think it's not just a matter of getting a big market to play on, it's actually, uh, it's a necessity to go global today. If you don't go global, I said this on stage for four or five years ago, the international, uh, you know, Amazon and they are coming. Uh, we Not in our sector, Amazon, uh, obviously they have a proven time from, you know, over and over again they, that they are not good at fashion and they can't uh, copy our private label play, but uh, yeah, go global. That's good. All right, guys. That's it, I think. Applause. Thank you. Fantastic.
Thank you, Arno. Thank you. So. <clears throat>